When I finished college a few years back, like so many millennials, I had a wee crisis of finances and decided to move back home for a few months, saving money and all that, you know? Now, my parents live in a small town, not quite rural. There's at least three churches, but nearly everyone knows everyone, or at least everyone knows everyone's people. Now, new people move in fairly often, but they either settle into a church and get some, some people real quick, or they move on again. Craw Daddy didn't move on again. He didn't get no people either, he just stayed. I'll go back. When I decided to head back home, I didn't have a job lined up. There was this little local coffee joint though, pretty good for a non-chain in the deep south. The owner, she went to church with my parents. I had helped her out at a shop a few times, filling shifts on register and the like. She was always short-staffed, so of course, Hanner's was my first call. Sure enough, she gave me a job on the spot. Now, here's the thing about working register in a coffee shop. You meet some weird, creepy people. And usually, when it comes down to it, they're just awkward. You get mouth breathers and people who don't make eye contact normally, and those who lean too far over the counter and try to touch your hair, and people who just keep asking you if you got a boyfriend, pretty little thing like you, maybe a few ill intentions, but mostly just a lack of social skills. But I can kind of sympathize with them. I'm sure I'm awkward too sometimes, a lot of times, so I just sort of deal with it. Brisk smile, step back from the register, gotta go check something in the back. And if this was any of those incidences, I'd post it over in Reddit Creepy Encounters. As I settled in over my first week, as an official employee, I got a lot of people asking if I was new, obviously, or you wouldn't be asking. Of course, they really just wanted to know who my people were and where I fit in. That's how these towns work. So I tell them and be all friendly. And after they left, I'd ask my coworkers, only two or three of us at a time, who they were. One evening, week two or three by this point, this guy comes in about 20 minutes before closing. Awkward vibe. He starts in with the usual, ah, you're um, you're new. Yes, ma'am, wanna order? I've got floors to mop. Of course, I was being polite out loud. Can I get um, a large coffee? I'm tired, you know? He giggles. I work in the kitchen just down the road, you know? I craw daddies. So I grab his coffee and ask if he's got an account. A lot of the regulars do. Oh, no, 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 no. I ain't putting my name in no sort of computer. They get you that way, you know? Okay then, buddy. Okay. He never did tell us his name, by the way. We only found out from the arrest record way down the line. So he leaves. And I asked my coworker what Craw Daddy's deal is. He doesn't know. The man's got no church, no family, nobody really knows. Just comes in after closing the kitchen down the way and gets a coffee. Bit odd though, for someone with no kin. He's been around for at least a year. Still, not my problem. A few weeks, months go by. I start getting more and more closing shifts. Fine by me. I'm pretty nocturnal. I start seeing Craw Daddy more and more. Used to be, he only came in once a month or so. Then it was every couple weeks. Then once a week. He got more awkward, too. Most people pick up the hints and sort of drop it. Craw Daddy starts asking me if I'll start putting cream and sugar in his drink for him. He starts asking me more and more about myself. Do I like the job? How's Hanners as a boss? Where did I go to school? What part of town do I live in? Would I want to come waitress down at Craw Daddy's? I shut that down pretty quick. Finally... It's the point where he starts asking me every night when I get off. Stupid question, honestly. It's not like he doesn't know where we close, but it's making me uncomfortable. Still, I'm not fixing to call the cops on a guy because he's bad at reading social cues. So instead, I work out a thing with my coworkers where if they see Craw Daddy coming, I duck out to the back and putter around until he's gone. This works for a grand total of about three days. And then, as I'm chilling in the back, I hear Craw Daddy ask my coworker, Aza, if he's alone that night. None of us ever work alone. There's always at least two of us. Well, nah. She's in the round somewhere. Craw Daddy ambles over to the counter to put cream and sugar in his coffee and stays. I wait for Aza to give it the all clear. It doesn't come. The minutes tick. And finally, Aza tells him we're closing. But where is she? Aza says he doesn't know. And he's gotta close. But I wanna see her. As I basically gives him a sorry man and tells him to get, he finally leaves. Neither of us are too sure what to think of, what to think of that. 
I decided to head home and call Hanners in the morning. Sure, it wouldn't be the first time. She's had to tell a customer to back off. When I do call her, she asks me if I want to switch to afternoon shifts for a while. Life goes back to normal. Afternoon is fine. Busier, but still... But still pretty good. And then a week or two later, Ivy's girlfriend dumps her. She has a bit of a mental breakdown, and I end up pulling a double through to closing. Sure enough, in rolls Crawdaddy and me with no time to hide. Oh, you're, you're back. You're still working here. Yeah, pal. Just move shifts around to avoid you. What's up? Large coffee? Are you not working nights anymore? You should work work nights. I can only come in nights, you know. I tell him it's all a bit flexible. Never really know when I'm working. Sorry about it. No, that's that's not right. I know Hanners gives you your schedule a week ahead of time. You told me that. You you told me lots of things. Ah, shit. You you should um you should have given me your schedule so I know. No way in hell. As I was back from wherever he inconveniently was, and I run to the back, and I stay there until suddenly Hanners pops in, which is weird. She's got kids. She doesn't work nights. She tells me to get on home, and she'll call me after clothes. Turns out after I lock myself in the back, Craw Daddy kept pestering Aza for my schedule. Aza didn't want to call the cops either, so Hanners came in to tell Craw Daddy to back off. When she arrived, Craw Daddy was halfway over the counter, trying to grab the printed sheets under the register. Jokes on him, they're just receipts. She banned him from the store. Straight told him if he showed up again, in the next year, it'd be trespassing. I was grateful, but also I needed a break. I asked her if I could take a bit of a holiday week after next head to the beach for a few days. I'm pretty reliable, and we were in the calm before the busy season, and also Hanners is a great boss, so of course she agrees. We set it so that I'm back tonight for a few days, and then a mid, then an open. I wanted the open shift, so I had a full free day to drive. She's nice enough to not make anybody close one night and open the next day. Of course, we aren't sure that Craw Daddy won't try and show up, so we make sure I'm closing with male co-workers. Every night, we've got someone in that shop who opens carries. Six days, that's all. Day one, sure enough, Craw Daddy comes walking down the street. Jason goes walking outside, holster on hip. Craw Daddy turns himself around. Day two, nothing. Day three, nothing. Day four, nothing. But... Now, I've got to explain something about the way I drive. Everyone starts driving young in this town, and you sort of just learn to pay close attention to other cars. If, if, if you know how many cars are around, and how fast you're going, you know whether or not someone's in your blind spot, and if you got time to switch lanes, and whether or not you should overtake. It gets to a point where it's not even conscious, it's just a thing. So I leave work on day four, and I start heading home, pull out of the lot, there's a couple cars on the road, take my first turn, there's a few trucks and beat up white sedan, second turn, now just two trucks, third turn, lose a truck and a sedan, gain a red sedan, fourth turn, I overtake the red car and a black truck, I'm getting more out of town now, fewer streetlights, another turn, both cars still with me, another and the same, my next turn is onto this dark windy road, no lights at all on it, and it's bendy, but there's no offshoots. Black truck turns in behind me, red sedan carries on past us. The speed limit's gone up, hit the gas, check my phone, check my mirrors, black truck is gone. There's no way it could have gone. There's no turnoffs. it didn't overtake, and I would see the lights through the trees, even if it was way back. In that funny way your mind does, my brain flicks through all the options, and besides that, they must have crashed. Out of state plates. They don't know the road. It's bumpy. I slam my brakes. And out of the corner of my eye. A flash of movement. I twist. This asshole cut their lights. And is sitting in my blind spot. I do like any reasonable person would and peel out of there. Like the peripheral bat. Fucker still behind me. No hands to call the cops. No time to think. I'm already too close to home. My parents' driveway has no real security. Neither does the house. I wasn't about to risk that. But they've got a way back. 
There's this nature reserve outside of town. It's all gated off, and you've got to get a pass if you want in. People who work there get them, and a few other people who live in the houses that butt up to it. The gates are electric, you just drive up and they open, and close behind you. I start build building speed, so does the truck. It's too close. If I go in the gate, the truck's gonna follow. So I build more speed, drive past the entrance, and pull a handbrake turn. I get through the gate and I can see him stopping, turning. The gate is taking its own sweet time closing, and the first road through the reserve is straight and wide. If the truck gets through, there's nowhere to hide. So instead, I back into a lay-by, right inside the gate just in time. The truck comes roaring up. At first, I think it's gonna smash through, but the brakes squeal and it stops, and sits. My heart's a million miles an hour. We're 20 minutes out from town. Cops aren't gonna get here soon. I call my brother instead. He grabs a gun, jumps in his truck, and starts heading around outside. Black truck, still just sitting. One minute, two minutes, three minutes. And there's Paul's truck. Just like that, black truck jumps into action and peels off. Paul's come through the gates, and we call the cops. He's got the digits off the plates, and I remember the states. 911, we explain. They put us through to sheriff. Hey, you're the Howard kids, aren't you? We are. You've been having trouble with that guy at the coffee shop, haven't you, miss? I have indeed. It's a small town. Well, we'll just check the plates then because, oh, wait. Hmm. We wait. Well, um, it looks like uh, those might have been fake plates. Listen, y'all, we'll keep a lookout. But it was probably just the poachers trying to get onto the grounds. Y'all get to bed and I'll send some around for a statement tomorrow. I'm pretty sure it wasn't, but I wasn't raised to argue with a cop, especially one trying to make me feel better. Next day is my mid-shift, day five, and I'm desperate for the beach. Cops eventually take my statement, and I'm sure I rambled on about how ready I was for that holiday. Day six, I wake up to my alarm, and a text from Hanners. She's already up with the kids, and since she's up, she felt like working. She tells me she's got covered, just get on the road. I'm not looking a gift horse in the mouth. I get on the road. I'm gone for six days as planned when, when my mom calls. My sister a few states over is having a rough time and needs help with the baby. Mom already called Hanner's small town and she was cool. Could I just go help my sister? I'm gone for two more weeks. I get back to town and there's a weight off my chest. I probably just been overreacting to the whole thing anyways. Some people are just awkward, and it looks like Fraud Daddy got the message. He doesn't show up anyhow. Weeks go on, and we get some new employees. We throw a party, and as happens, we start talking about our most obnoxious customers. Y'all know the maca frap lady? Well, and you know that guy who gets the caramel macchiato, but wants us to say a cappuccino? So of course I jump in with God. Y'all remember Craw Daddy? Silence. You could cut that air with a knife. But no one's looking at me. Everyone's looking at Hanners. Um, Clam, um... I, I need to tell you something. Let's go outside. The day I left for the beach, that I was meant to open, the police had caught Crawdaddy breaking into the shop with a knife, duct tape, and a phone full of pictures of me leaving work. A black truck with false plates parked out back. The state pressed felony charges, and my family made sure I was out of town until everyone knew he wasn't getting bail. I don't know how long he was locked up for, and I don't want to. I live pretty far away now, anyways. I never ate at Crawdaddy's again.